The Inca civilization is one of the most famous and fascinating of antiquity. In addition to its buildings, it is known for carrying out human sacrifices. One of the most impressive was the Capacocha, where miners were sacrificed. There are dozens of mummies as proof of these practices. The Capacocha translates as royal obligation, one of the most important rituals of the Inca calendar, in which boys and girls were sacrificed, who were selected depending on their health, physical appearance, and family. It was held at festivals in honor of the gods, for the coronation or death of the Inca governor, and also to promote good harvest or ward off disasters, such as plagues, droughts, famines, or volcanic eruptions. For the imperial Capacochas, from each of the Inca territories, several boys and girls between 6 and 10 years old, who were handsome, without any disease, stain, or scar, and from good families, especially children of chiefs, were sent to Cusco. For them, they were the purest beings. Their families gave their son to the state as a tribute. Most of them consider this act a great honor. In the case of girls, an exception could be made regarding their age. Up to 16 years old, as long as they hadn't yet had intimate relations. Approximately a year before the sacrifice, the boy or girl was chosen. They walked long distances in the direction of Cusco. There, the Inca preceded the ceremonies of choosing the child who would be sacrificed. The miners were escorted by a group of priests and companions to the city. They were dressed in the best clothes and treated with privileges. The rites could last several weeks, during which ritual dances, offerings of gold and silver objects and seashells were performed, and animal sacrifices. The selected man traveled directly to Cusco, the Inca capital. The girls first went to the Agyaguasi, or House of the Chosen Women, to meet the Mama Cuna, a group of nun-like matriarchs. These women were responsible for educating girls in the arts of weaving, sewing, and the preparation of chicha, a spiritual drink. Not all those who reached the Mama Cuna were destined to die as a sacrifice. Some of them stayed in the Akiawasi and were consecrated priestesses to help raise other girls. Another group traveled to Cusco to enter the service of the emperor. And the third group of girls were those who would die in the Capacocha ritual. During these ceremonies, children were sacrificed as children of the sun and received gifts appropriate to their new condition, such as high-quality combi fabrics. These fabrics were a symbol of Inca belonging even chiefs and caciques were prohibited from using them. Then the Inca and the priest presided over the symbolic marriage ceremony of girls and boys. The daughter of the chief of one village married the son of the chief of another, establishing genealogical ties. When the ceremonies were over, the children, the priest, and their entourage of companions began the journey back to their communities. When they returned, they didn't do so following the royal road, or the Inca road, as on the way out but they had to follow a path in a straight line. It didn't matter if it was more difficult or dangerous, it was a long trip, crossing valleys, rivers, and mountains, which could last months. Upon arriving at their towns, they were received with great celebrations by the locals, and after these celebrations, they went in procession to the place of sacrifice. The offering ceremony had different characteristics in each place. In most cases, children were drugged with a corn alcohol drink, called chicha, and coca leaves. Some sources claim that the children ingested these natural drugs for days before the ceremony, so that they would die happy for the gods. They didn't feel anything, they were drugged. Their unconscious bodies were placed at the ceremony site, exposed to temperatures of minus 20 degrees, and they died from hypothermia. In other cases, they accelerated their death by provoking it more violently with a strong blow to the head, and others with puncture wounds in their chest, and strangulation was also practiced. Human sacrifices were considered a means to establish a direct connection with the gods. Through these rituals, the Incas sought to obtain divine favor and ensure the protection and prosperity of their empire. It was believed that the sacrifice victims acted as intermediaries bringing their requests and needs of the people to the deities. On the other hand, these rituals served to reaffirm the hierarchy and power of the ruler, who was considered a representative of the gods on earth. Participation in these events strengthened the identity and unity of the community, 
by bringing its members together around a common and sacred cause. To date, several discoveries related to the Capacocha have been found. The most famous bodies found are the Queen of the Hill, the Child of El Plomo Hill, the Mummy Juanita, and the children of Yuya Yaco. The Queen of the Hill, also known as La Reina del Cerro, is a mummy found in the province of Salta, Argentina. It is estimated that she was between 8 and 9 years old and that she was sacrificed between the year 1400 and 1532 in a Capacocha ceremony. Her tomb was found between 1920 and 1922 by a Bacchiano and a miner who attacked her tomb with dynamite. They extracted the girl's mummified body along with textiles and objects of great value. They took the mummy down to Tolombon, and the inhabitants named it the Queen of the Hill. While she was there, they put candles around her and gave her offerings. Shortly after, a merchant and collector named Pedro Mendoza appeared, bought it, and moved it to Cafayate. To add this piece to his large collection, he exhibited it in one of his large homes, charging an entrance fee to see it. Sometime later, Mendoza sold the mummy to another collector. Perfecto Bustamante, who also put the mummy on display in his business premises. It was then sold to Absjorn Pedersen in exchange for a gas installation. Pedersen was an engineer and amateur archaeologist. He deposited the mummy in the basement of his house along with other archaeological objects, where it remained without any care for 50 years, and later it would pass through different hands more. Both the girl's body and the objects of great value with which she was buried suffered the consequences of the illegal trafficking of cultural property, and little by little she was stripped of the items that accompanied her. After eight decades wandering through different private collections, basements, and closets, the mummy and the few objects that were recovered have been on display since 2006 in the Museum of High Mountain Archaeology, although it is in great deterioration. With the studies carried out on the mummy, it was determined that the cause of death was a puncture wound in the right hemithorax, which entered through her back, which is reinforced by the expression of pain that the mummy presents. The mummy's hair was styled in fine braids. It was striking that she didn't have any shoes, but it is possible that she lost them during the times when she changed owners. The same happens with respect to the statuettes and gold and silver objects that according to data would have accompanied the mummy. The locals even mentioned amounts of 4 to 5 kilos of gold and the same amount of silver. But probably during the years of discovery, someone had kept them. The deterioration suffered is evident in the comparison to photographs that were previously obtained. The mummy completely lost its nose, almost all of its hair and much of the skin on its skull. It is also not known with certainty how many pieces of the Truzal were lost. Another known case of Inca sacrifice is El Niño from Cerro El Plomo. It was the first discovery of an excellently preserved body at a high altitude on Cerro El Plomo. It was found by three men who began an excursion in search of some treasure. First, they found the child. His arms were linked around his legs and his head was resting on his right shoulder and arm. Before dying, he covered his legs with his short tunic, trying to protect himself from the intense cold. His eyes were closed and he seemed to be sleeping peacefully. The hikers spent the night on the mountain, and the next day, they chose to descend only with the objects, without the body, which they left buried and hidden in a cave. Then they tried to get rewards for their discovery. Finally, they received a payment of 45,000 pesos to integrate it into the collection of the Natural Museum of History of Chile. Thanks to the characteristics of the climate, the body had been preserved in optimal conditions, given the impression of being in front of a sleeping individual who could wake up at any moment. When the discovery was made, it was a frozen corpse and its conservation was solely due to its permanence for several centuries in an environment whose temperature was below zero degrees. The mummification process began with the transfer of the body to other climatic conditions, where the discoverers kept it for five weeks and later in Santiago, Chile. But in no way is it an artificially prepared mummy, like the Egyptian ones, for example, but rather the product of a natural process. He was dressed for the ceremony in a dark wool shirt, a blanket that covered his back, and on his feet he wore leather moccasins. They painted his face red with ochre stripes and his hair was styled with more than 200 braids. 
On his right forearm, he had a white silver bracelet, and on his head, he wore a headdress of black wool, crowned with feathers. It was deposited in a chamber excavated in the place called the Burial Place, and later covered with slabs. Nearby, a silver female statuette and other symbolic ornaments were buried. After the Incas finished the ceremony, they resumed their return journey, and the child was left alone. Even though the little boy was drowsy from the drugs he had been given, the height of the mountain was so extreme that he curled up in fetal mode to protect himself from the cold. His body temperature dropped until hypothermia caused his death. It was found that in the last moment of his life, he vomited and defecated on himself. El Niño is located in the National Museum of Natural History of Chile. Until the 1980s, it was exposed to the public. However, due to the deterioration it began to experience, it was transferred to the anthropology area of the museum to guarantee its optimal preservation. Currently, a replica of the body is displayed in the museum, while only researchers have access to the original. As for the Juanita mummy, it was discovered in 1995 on an expedition to the Ambato volcano. Two men saw a lump inside the crater, and upon approaching, they discovered that it was the very well-preserved body of a girl. Around it, she had several offerings such as gold statuettes and various plants. After carrying out studies, they found that Juanita died at 13 or 14 years old. She was a healthy girl without any illness. She was found holding her umbilical cord, which had probably been saved specifically for sacrifice, indicating that she had been selected to be sacrificed before her birth. She had a 5 cm crack in her skull and internal bleeding that led to her death. It is said that she had probably received a big blow to the head while she was kneeling. Juanita was found frozen, and therefore her remains and clothing were preserved naturally, like that of Cerro El Plomo. Their skins, organs, tissues, blood, hair, stomach contents, and clothing were very well preserved. Offering scientists details of the Inca culture, Juanita's body is located in the Andean Sanctuaries Museum in Peru. As for another of the most important discoveries, in 1999, near the summit of the Yunayaco volcano, three infant mummies, El Niño, La Doncella, and La Niña del Rayo, were found, known as the mummies of Yuyayaco. They were also in very good condition due to the freezing temperatures in which they were preserved, and which today are exhibited in the Museum of High Mountain Archaeology in Salta. Although it was already known that alcohol and coca were determining factors in the human sacrifices of the Incas, the remains found in the hair allowed us to deduce new details about how these rituals were prepared. Thus, a year before she died, the diet of La Doncella, the oldest of the children, changed drastically. Apparently, at that time, she would have been chosen for sacrifice, and since then, they offered her more animal protein, which not everyone could have access to. Coca leaves, which are used as raw material for cocaine, produce, among other things, a common effect when chewed mixed with ash. The Incas believed that states of drunkenness allowed access to the world of spirits. This and alcohol were substances that caused a change of a state considered sacred. In addition, these drugs also helped make children more docile when it came to rituals. The first body located was El Niño, approximately seven years old. He was sitting on a gray robe with his face directed towards the sun. He had short hair, a white feather ornament wrapped around his head, and an ornament on his chest. The second discovery, a few meters from El Niño, was La Doncella, a 15-year-old girl. She wore a feather headdress on her head. Her face still had traces of red pigments and traces of coca leaves in her mouth. Her hair was styled in small braids. The third discovery corresponded to a small girl, six years old, who was sitting with her legs bent and her head upright, looking towards the southwest. At some point, the lightened bolt penetrated more than a meter into the ground and reached her, damaging part of her body and her clothing. For this reason, she is known as La Niña del Rayo, that means the lightning girl. Her hair is styled with two small braids that come out from the forehead, and she wore a metal plate as an ornament. Her eyes are closed and her mouth is half open, revealing her teeth. The remains found of all of these children allowed us to learn today part of the history of the Incas. 
and how they carried out these human sacrifices. Criticism from some sectors of these studies focuses on respect for cultural tradition, as well as who owns the ownership of the archaeological remains. These groups maintain that the removal of children's bodies constitutes desecration. What do you think? Should these mummies be left buried, respecting the sacred actions of ancestors? Or do you agree to its use for research and exhibition purposes in museums? We read you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!